Living and breathing La Vida Boa. Welcome to the Boa Life Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Demora, alongside Nick Colhey. We're here to question, answer, we're here to reflect, and we're here in search of that good life. Good evening, everyone. I'm your co-host, Nick Colhey. This is the Boa Life Podcast, episode number three. You ready, Steve? Let's go. <laughs> So uh, here we are, episode three. Episode number three. It's like one, two, three. Like we're deep in it at this point. This is unbelievable. Well, there ain't no going back now. No, I don't think so. This is uh, this is three going on three hundred. I uh, want to take this opportunity to to say hello, uh, welcome <laughs> to hello, the show because we're gonna treat each other today like guests, right? That's right. Um, before we do that, I just want to reflect back on what we've done so far. We had. Uh, a great first episode where we fumbled around a little bit, talked about ourselves a little bit. I mean, there's still a lot to unpack with with regard to what we are doing here and who we are. But um, we got a little uh, a bite at the apple, and, and certainly we're going to revisit that in future episodes. But here we go. Here we are again, just you and I, um, and our mics, and no guests to lean on. Um, so I, I can't wait to have a discussion with you and I. But it was something to have that that guest. Would would you think? What did you think was the difference between you know you and I putting on a show and then having a, a Q and A with someone? Well, it's you know Steve, it's difficult to say because um, you know we've only had two episodes, so we've had only two single experiences. Very good point. <laughs> but I can say it was a lot easier having Dan in the middle. You know the pressure's off us a little bit. Just. Just, you know, dynamic in the room alone, you know, focus is right down the middle on him. He didn't know whether to look right, look left, you know. Um, we were just super comfortable. We knew we had to take questions to him, and uh, I, I felt it, it went great, though. Yeah, I, I agree, and it, you're right. There was a certain comfort level there, you know, another another crutch there, and it was amazing how in our interaction he opened up, and as it went on, we got, you know, all a little more comfortable with each other, and, and I love that dynamic, but I also like this dynamic – and I like the way that this is evolving. Every day we're figuring out new ways to improve. We're getting a little more comfortable and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring the audience a lot of cool and different perspectives and experiences. So I can't wait. I said this time and time again, but I can't wait to 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 go further and see where this goes and be on this journey with you. So um, evolution is the key. Evolution. If you're not moving forward, you're going backwards, right? That's right. That's right. Primo. Well, yeah, <laughs> primo. So here I am, a year older. I had a birthday. I'm feeling a little, uh, a little old, but I'm feeling good. I feel like a, a fine wine. I'm aging well. Um, you know, the bones hurt every once in a while when I wake up, but I'm still feeling agile. Same here, same here. I think that happens with anyone, no matter yeah. what people tell you. You know, you get someone double your age, like, oh, you're young. You can deal with it. It's like, no, nah, well, every year adds a little more to your body. Yeah. Um, and your body's made to break down. From day of birth, you're just, you know, we're we're we're, we're you're, <laughs> you're going downhill. <laughs> we're we're starting we're starting to get a little depressing here. We don't, we don't want to do that. <laughs> well, you know, it's sometimes you, people need to hear that. No, I agree. The reality of it, and this is exactly what this is what we're exploring here too. Dealing with that aging, right? Trying to reinvent ourselves, what we can do to to be more positive and and to to be healthier. And uh, you know, we touched we touched. Uh, touched on the edges of that a little with Dan, but I mean, we're going to go further into that today. I guess my, I, I, I guess I'll start off maybe giving you a little Q and a here. The, Sweet. um, put me on the spot. Yeah. The, I guess the most important question is like, what is the BOA life to you? You know, what, what, what do you think that is? So just to uh, remind our listeners, the BOA life, uh, means the good life BOA in Portuguese, which I learned many years ago when I met my sweetheart, you know, <laughs> means good. So, um, you know, I reflected a little bit and, um, I would have to say the good life to me just means having a purpose, you know, ending each day, look at, you know, reflecting over the past, you know, 15 or so hours and saying, did you do anything good today? Did you help anyone or did you hurt anyone? You know, you have to, uh, that's how I look at it, you know, and that could be people at work people, just random strangers you meet or your own family or friends. So, uh, yeah, for me, it's like you don't even have to wake up with a plan. 
just know that you have a purpose and your purpose is to, I don't know, it's kind of cliche, do no harm, right? Yeah. So um, I try to keep that mentality and it, it's been working for me so far. That's great. Yeah, we're, we're definitely all interconnected. So I, I love that. I mean, I think the BOA life is probably different for everyone, right? Um, and to me, it's a, a lot about balance, but it's funny you say purpose because I think I share, I share that, that philosophy with you too every day live with purpose and be in the motion uh be in the moment um how how do you think you're doing living the boa life these days uh every day is different you know like most things you teeter back and forth um but i think i'm doing pretty good yeah you know we were just talking about aging and everything and the more you age the more experience you have in life so the more experience you have in life better decisions you can make going forward and that a better person you could be for your family and just society in general. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I, I really admire your commitment to exercise and fitness. It's something that I lack and I look at you and with admiration, cause it's like, I know the discipline it takes, what, what, you know, what's that, what do you, what are you doing every night before you go into bed and what do you do first thing in the morning to motivate yourself to just stay on task every day? Yeah. I guess this is mo- a more a uh, comfortable setting for me to talk about. Cause it's like, uh, it's all I really do try to stay healthy. And I feel like just by doing that, it leads into everything else in life. So my alarm is pretty much, you know, 5am or earlier and it's usually dark out. So it's, it's not easy getting out of bed. But when I wake up, my mentality is, is right away. Like get out of bed because I don't want to is the reason why I should, you know what I mean? Um, so get up routine chug some water, have a little coffee, um, check the weather because I commute to work. You know, um, I got to know these things. I like to be prepared as Kelly, uh, already knows. Um, typically do some kind of movement in the morning. I want to get my body moving, get the blood flowing. Um, for me, you know, being physical is, is, um, is important because it just like, it charges your, your brain mentally. It just, it, it gets you a step ahead and then you can move on to the next task in your day. Um, so after that on to work, um, you know, try to do good there, help people and, um, get a workout during the day. I have a gym at my job, so I get my workout in and, um, know from there, go home, be a family man. I want to share with the audience. What's that? What's your motto in the mornings? What's that motto you live by? Oh, the motto. Here, Here we go. So I like to hashtag beat the sun. Um, It's funny you say that because um, when I came up with that, I was thinking about um, the oddest thing. Like when we're born, we're born Catholic. You know, we both went to a Catholic school, right? Yes, yes we did. Yeah. So Jesus was important from the moment you're born. And um, if I remember correctly, we're all born with original sin. So what, what does that even mean? You know? I, well, I think it means that we have the inherent ability of doing wrong, right? And that we have to work hard to make sure we're doing the good, good thing. That we were born, you know, somewhat evil, so we have to make sure that we're we're doing we're doing good every day. So it's a it, it, it can be a struggle. And I think I, I don't. It's been a while since I've been studying this stuff, but I think <laughs> well, Jesus well, died on the cross term, to get right? to pay for our sins. So I think He helped us in that regard. All right. But, so let's say you're tarnished from birth. Yeah. Right. You're born with original sin. You're born, like you said, with some kind of evil, as bad as that may sound. Yeah. You're, you know, you're you're set back from the beginning. So how do you get forward? You have to move forward. So if I, I use the mentality, like if I wake up every day, the moment I open my eyes, I'm already a step behind. So I tell myself I have to do something to get back to neutral, not even a step ahead. First, you got to get back to neutral. You know, if you're in reverse, you can't go into first or second gear without hitting neutral first. So that has been my mentality. So I have to get up and do something right away to get to neutral and then start moving forward from there. I love that mentality. It's like as an athlete, I had that chip on my shoulder. Never, you know, I never had anybody telling me I was that good. I knew it deep down and and that I could be, that I could be good. And, and it was like the similar mentality. It's like the chip on your shoulder. Like I'm starting behind, you know, and I, I gotta, I gotta get ahead. So I I love that mentality. Oh, I know we briefly discussed off camera before, and we have some great conversations before and and after, after these podcasts, which is enlightening. And, uh, I, I, I remember telling you, like, I read a lot. And one of the, 
one of the key factors in success is getting up early, you know, getting up early, beating everyone, um, get, you know, early bird gets the worm. So you're, you're, you're doing that and it's certainly showing in your fitness. And again, I, I, I can't tell you how much I admire that because it's one of the things I struggle with. So as I'm always looking to you and other people for inspiration and advice and how I can, I, I can do that. So, I mean, more power to you. Well, before, just let me say real quick, before you can wake up early and even have the mental energy to get out of bed, you got to start the night before. And then it's obviously, it's a revolving cycle. So the night before, you don't want to sit and we all know blue light is bad for us. It doesn't, it, it disrupts your sleep. You know, get off your phone. Why bother binge watching TV when you know you got to get up early anyway? So everyone has their own set of hours of sleep that their body needs. Some people four, some people eight. So, you know, don't sit around all night you know, mindlessly watching television when, you know, you got to get up in the morning and you have a goal in mind for the next day. I, I couldn't agree with you more. It's, I, and, and I've, I've been down, I've been down that street, uh, you know, staying, have, yeah. yeah, staying up late watching TV. And, and the more I reflect in the past, it's like, what a waste that was. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. What, what do you, interesting enough. I think, I think my target sleep is like six and a half to, you know, to eight hours or I'll, I'm, I'm in trouble. What, what are you doing these? And, and it, I used to be able to work on much less sleep. Yeah. When but you're younger, it's easy. Yeah. What, what are you, what are you looking for these days? So I guess my aim would be somewhere around seven and you said six and a half to eight. Yeah. yeah that's that, that would be my range too. Sweet so sweet. if I'm trying you know, depending on kids when they get down, if I want to try to, you know, not just get in bed, like be asleep by 10 and I set the alarm for five. What's that? Seven hours. So I find that doable. Nice. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's, you know, you, you have a plan, you, 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 you go with your plan, you set up your life so that you can be successful. And I think that's key. And it seems like you're doing that. And, and, you know, I think that's something we're going to unpack and with future guests or on future podcasts that um, a lot of success in life is having these plans, having these, have, be, being disciplined to follow out, uh, follow up and, and, and do what you're supposed to do to have this root, routine. Um, how important do you think it is to keep a routine? And, 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 and also how important is it to break that routine every once in a while? Or is that, is that a dangerous thing to do? I think answer yes to both your questions, even though that seems like an opposite, it should have an opposite answer because we've spoken about the 80, 20 rule. So you want to have a very, you know, set routine for yourself 80% of the time and then 20% of the time don't sabotage it, but just know that you almost need to screw up a little bit unintentionally to realize you're human and you're going to make mistakes because you're not perfect. No one's perfect and perfection is unachievable. Basically, <laughs> don't be so hard on yourself, right? Yeah, the routine exactly. is important, but don't be afraid to break it every once in a while. The routine is very important. But, but if you but if you lo- but if you lose it, if you lose the routine, at what point are, are you in danger of losing that routine? Like well, a day, a week, a month? You know, there's no set time. I mean, it, it depends on where you are and what you're doing. You yeah. know, if you're new to, all right, let's take an example. If you're new to working out, and you're, you're good for a week. Don't think you're going to, you know, take three days off and, and jump back in it. It's not enough time. You know, seven days compared to three is not enough time. You work out for a month straight. You know, you're really good with a routine for a month, 30 days. And then you have a random, you know, two to three days here and there. That's okay. Yeah. But the, the, the key is being consistent with 80-20 theory because the more you do that, time progresses. And then your little hiccups won't mean anything. Yeah, They're a big hiccup at first, but once you do it a couple times, they become so minuscule. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. I always I remember reading somewhere that it's like sixty days to create a habit, and and you know when you get that habit, you can go on autopilot. It's like you can live in the moment, which you should, right? But have you ever driven in your car and you're driving, and like twenty minutes later, you think I just drove for twenty minutes? Where did the time go? What did I, how did I even do it? Like, how did I not crash? I wasn't even paying attention. Can't even remember. Right. And it's like, so if you get into the routines that you're dead set on doing things, it makes, it, it does make it easier, but it's like creating that routine and it's all in the setup. And like you said, not watching TV, not getting on your phone before wet, bed, trying to try to go into bed at the same time. I mean, these are all like things that have helped me for sure. You got to set yourself up for success. And the only way you're going to do that is to try things that, you know, other people have done that works for them right? Yeah. You're not going to think of some random thing you've never, ever seen before. It's borderline impossible. So you got to try things that have worked for other people, people you trust or 
people you just see online, you know, random famous people. You got to try it. Like we're trying to podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, who keep, knows where it's going to go. Keep trying, failing, keep getting up, right? You fall and exactly. get back up. It's funny you mentioned success. So, I mean, the good life to you is a life of purpose, which I completely agree with you. Um, how, how do you, how do you factor in success and what is your view on success in life as well? So I guess it can go in stages depending on where you're at, you know, um, been married, um, approaching 10 years now, not super close to that. Yeah. I would say eight, 10 years. It's hard to remember the day. I'm not going to put you on that. <laughs> eight eight <laughs> years. Eight years. Okay. I'll just go a, by the a year. Meritable, a meritable, so. <laughs> a a bliss of pure bliss. Pure bliss. Yeah. Pure bliss, Kelly. Um, so yeah, it goes in stages first, you know, you know, you get married, you want to be a successful spouse. Then you want to get through a couple years living with each other and really, you know, becoming a couple. Then it's like, be successful at it for five years and then kids come into the mix. So, you know, success is measured and looked at in so many different ways. Um, for me, I just now currently, I want to be a role model for my kids. I want to be actually, I want to be a role model for everyone. Yeah. I want to be a role model for our listeners. You know, hopefully they take something away from from listening to us that they can use to develop their own good habits. And um, right now, yeah, it's just being a good role model for everyone I come across. Um, mainly the family and kids. You know, you want to bring up good kids so they're not um, a detriment to society. Yeah. You know, um, so you got to, and and that's a that's a learning purpose for myself as well. You know, you have kids that are a couple of years older, so you have more experience here. And yeah, you, I, don't, I don't experience. I don't know how that, what that means. <laughs> well, I guess time, time is experience. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you, you, I mean, being a parent's tough, like to be, and, and my, my goal is to be a good role model and, and, and my success will have, have, if I can bring up my kids to be good human beings, then I, I that's going to be my biggest marker of success for me. And it's interesting you say trying to be a great role model because that's what I do because kids are going to mirror what you do. And if you want them to be good, um, I, I, I fail so much, um, Nick, where I say do what I say and not what I do, which exactly. as a parent, you can you can find yourself doing that a lot. And I do that and and, and I'm only human and, and you know, I, I regret it. And it, it, it jumps into the next question is. What, it, what would, what is your greatest fear when it comes to being a husband and a father? Um, the biggest mistake you think you can make or trying to avoid? I mean, well, fear or singular mistake. I mean, just you know, whatever comes to mind is like, what are you worried about as a, as a husband well, and as a father? You know what? Well, yeah. If you're going to, you know, frame it like that, I'm just worried not being there for them. You know, um, no one wants to talk about, you know, not being there for your family. God forbid something terrible happens and, you know, you're not, you're not there for them. Um, that's the biggest fear. Yeah. You know, you, you only get really one life um, and you need to, you want to be here as long as possible. Yeah. I mean, wow. <laughs> it's a scary it, subject, yeah, right? A lot, but, of, a lot of the things you're saying, it just, it's like, it's funny because it just reflects on a lot of, it's kind of a lot of the same things that go through my head. It's. I mean, you know, I lost my mother when I was younger to cancer. And I mean, it's not her fault, but you know, my, my fear is one day, you know, God forbid something's going to happen to me and my kids won't have a father. And, and that's probably one of my greatest fears. But, you know, that's why this is important because, you know, we're going to discuss, you know, making sure you're around how you can be strong in your relationship so that your, you know, your wife doesn't kick you to the curb one yeah. day, right? <laughs> how to be healthy so we can make sure that, you know, not that everything's in your control, but we can mitigate that stuff as much as possible. So it's funny is like, I hear, I hear you talking about this stuff and it's like echoing in my own head. And I wonder, I hope, I, I guess I don't hope, but I wonder how many people in the audience are going to do the same stuff and be like, Jesus guys have the same worries, the same concerns is trying to, you know, the same hopes and dreams. And, uh, I, I think what, what compelled me to do this. And I think what compelled you to commit to doing this too, is that, is that, we have something to say. We want to be good role models. We want to, we're in search of helping people and we're in search of getting help from others. And we have that through our conversations with other people, with each other. And, um, I, I don't know. I think we're creating a great opportunity for the audience, for our guests and, and for ourselves. I mean, I'm definitely growing every day, getting more comfortable behind the mic. I, I know you are, I can see it in you and you're saying doing things 
that make you feel uncomfortable. Like this is something that is, yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> this is something that definitely is outside of our framework. And, and here we are yeah, um, doing it now. I have spent a lot of time reflecting on my life, obviously, but most, most importantly right now I've been reflecting on what I think is important for us to share about ourselves with, with the audience. And certainly in the future, Little by little, we're going to open up to them and and share our lives with them, whether it be here on the podcast or in doing things and showing peaks into our life. What is something that you want to tell them now that you want to share with them? Um, is there anything? <laughs> yeah, so we can backtrack where we were a few minutes ago, and that would probably um, help because it's it's not easy to think about, you know, it. God forbid you're not around, what, what are people going to... Uh, you know, think or do, or God forbid you have to leave a family behind, which is scary to think about, but it's true. So one of the reasons why I try to be live the good life is because I know that there could be a bad life out there. And that's, it's weird to kind of put into words, but if you realize that you only get one life and that life is so short and you keep that mentality, why not do good? Why not be uncomfortable? Why not try things? Because you know what? If you just go around every day and you don't have any impact on people and you're just, you know, Joe Schmo walking around, you know, feeling bad for yourself, no one's going to remember you. Mm. And that may be good for some people. But, you know, for most people, we have this, um, we have something inside of us that we want to uh, be someone and show people, you know, how we feel inside, get our feelings into words and actions. And, yeah, just to backtrack a little bit for me, it's like YOLO. You, know, you only live once, so why not? Why not be uncomfortable? Why not try things? Why not be on a podcast? Yeah, and, you know, and let people into your life. You you want to be remembered, and what you do today echoes in eternity, right? So it's like, uh, yeah, I think agree. about all the famous people who are remembered to this day. You know, they did great things, you know, but then all these other people that did, did great things, no one knows about. So why can't you be either of those people? Why can't you leave something for for your kids to talk about and reminisce when they're your age? I, I completely agree with you. I mean, you, you never took the chance, never had the opportunity. Here we are having an opportunity to uh, to shine, and I hope we shine bright for sure. Um, I really, um, I I really think that there's so many areas that we can explore, um, and. We're going to do that, obviously, through a lot of guests and everything. But, I mean, I can't wait to have certain guests on. Is there a guest that you're looking forward to having on the podcast? Um, well, I know having our wives on should be um, <laughs> should happen soon because um, that will be very interesting. And I think it will be good for us. You know, you're, you're home with your spouse every, every day with the kids running around. And, you know, sometimes – important things get lost in that because you're in a routine you know it's hectic i'm sure especially if your kids can walk or need to be fed or have a dirty diaper (laughs) um i know we both work a lot we're out of the house many hours a day and you come home you're kind of on autopilot and you know i think it's important that we it'll be fun that we get our wives out of that and into this kind of setting i i I can't wait it's gonna be it's like a science experiment it's like you know (laughs) When you're when you're in the thick of it as a parent and you're with the kids and it's all about the kids and then you find yourself with your wife and I'm sure other people when you know I can relate to this and you're at a bar you're went to dinner just the two of you and yeah. you're like don't know what to talk about because it, you haven't been alone in so long it gets it's awkward. like I can't wait to see what this is gonna be like <laughs> I mean this is gonna be like an out of body experience yeah and no. I can't wait to see how they're gonna be and and uh, it'll definitely be a I think it'll be a It'll, it'll be an experience for sure. Um, yeah, that'll that'll be soon. So the viewers and, and the listeners will, will be able to see, you know, they'll be surprised that, you know, um, how beautiful our wives are. <laughs> <They marry laughs> what are they doing with these guys? <laughs> what are they doing with these guys? Um, but, I, yeah, that'll be, that, that'll be awesome. And then um, I know, you know, I know you're eager to, as I am, to, to let the audience uh, experience like some of our in and out near our, our daily lives. What, what part of your like life are you, are you like eager to share with, with others? Oh, that's a good question. 
I would love to say all of it because I think all parts are my day. You know, any little bit of each part can be very interesting. Probably some parts of the day you can't, you know, bring the public in and see. <laughs> but um, I think just um, getting out there and being ourselves. You know, I could I could show everyone what I do for exercise. So could you. Yeah. Um, or you could take someone into your office and show them how much paperwork you go through. Yeah, I don't like want to. I don't want to bore them to death. Um, it depends on what the viewer wants. I, I'm I'm actually eager to let them see a different side of us because I think that what people are gonna and it, it what people are gonna see uh, of uh, what people are gonna make of us here, right? When we're in front of the camera and we're talking to each other, versus how we are in you know our own environments, whatever that means. But I, I feel like you and I can be onions in that respect, you know, because I've seen you doing you know doing your fitness stuff and it's like a person a different personality emerges and yep. with me it's too I, I, I wear different hats like and at work people that know me on a personal level then see me at work or see me in this other environment they're like who, who is this guy yep. and I think even in, the, in this so far in this podcast I've, I've had a certain you know persona right like you know we're talking and we're trying to inform and we're trying to be interesting but um, you know, little by little, as we let people in, I just can't wait to, to see the feedback, um, on, on how, on what they think, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's definitely going to be great. Um, can only go up from here. Yeah. So, um, I got a question for you. Um, when you first, uh, called me about this idea, you know, you said you were inspired by, uh, some videos I did for the, for the challenge and the race that I did. But you had said that um, you had this idea for a long time, and it wasn't necessarily for a podcast, but it was just to do something different and leave a legacy for, you know, your kids. Um, why don't you touch on that a little bit? Like, how far back does this idea go? And what was, if you could put it into words, like, what was that vision inside your head? Yeah, I mean, you and again, it's like mirroring a lot of what you said, which is kind of eerie, but... <laughs> um, I always wanted to leave a, le a legacy to my family and I had the privilege of being raised by two parents that loved me and, and now I have my own family and my children and I want to make sure I'm the best father I can be and I'm trying to be the best husband I can be and I'm always trying to be the best friend I can be and family member. Um, again, I, I think we're in a world that right now is divided and there's a lot of crazy stuff going on, but I think it's important that people know like we're all in this together, like we're all connected. I'm, I've always been the type of person that felt like everybody can do good. You know, it's like, don't be jealous that that person has this or that. Like there's an infinite amount of anything out there, whatever you wish for, the world will give for, give to you. So I'm always looking at the glasses half full. Like I, I see the good in, in people and maybe sometimes I'm naive because I know there's evil out there, but um, I just want what's best for everyone. And certainly I want what's best for my kids. And Having, having a traumatic, so you can't have the good life without the bad life. So here's an important exactly. thing. It's like you touched, you touched on this in a different way. Like to me, it's like, I, I had the worst thing in the world ever happen to me. Right. But it also was a blessing in disguise. Right. So I lost my mother. I was 16, 15, 16 years old and it was devastating. I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't want anybody to have, have that happen to them to lose a parent. Um, I, I can't imagine anything worse than losing your mother. I don't even want to imagine losing a child. It, it, it was horrible, but it gives it gives me a. It, 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 I would say it's like I, I've seen hell, right? I, I don't. I can't even want to imagine what hell is, but it can't. It can't be much worse than that, right? So when you get that kind of perspective, you start to think, you know, I want to enjoy my life, but. I also want to make sure I live a good life, right? And then you get married and you have kids and then it's not all, all about you. And you want to make sure that your kids are good people and you want to make sure that if I'm not going to be around, I want to make sure that, that everything I can pour into them, I can. Now, God knows good intentions can pave the way to hell. Like I, I could want what's best for my kids and that not be what's best for them, right? And at the end of the day, I always tell my kids and they're young and they probably don't understand, but eventually you're going to be old enough and you're going to have to make your own decisions and you're going to have to live with those decisions. But, you know, I'm going to guide you as best as I can. And I love you. And these are the things I think are good. And, you know, I hope that they listen to that. And at the end of the day, when they have all that information, they make 
the best decision they can and have to live with those decisions. So my father um, is a very smart man, is experienced, came from Portugal, poor, made a good life for himself, is a person, uh, what I think has an infinite amount of, of real life experience and wisdom. Great speaker. Is very good. Very good speaker. Yes. And always gives me, I think, sound advice. But even him, sometimes I don't listen to him. I go my own way and I have to live with the consequences. I will say that 95% of the time my dad's told me something and I've gone against what he said. I'm usually wrong. He's usually right. Oh, of the times he's. I should have listened to him. Okay. Yeah. Right. But every once in a while, he tells me his advice, which he thinks isn't. He loves me more than anything. He wants to make sure that I make the right decision. But sometimes it's not the right decision. So our audience members, we're going to be giving them advice. We're going to have guests on. You know, what works from one person doesn't work for the other. But you will know we're being genuine. We're, we're in search of the right answers just like you are. But I went on a complete tangent, Nick. I apologize. But oh, at the end of the day, what the reason, what compelled me to want to do this is the same reason that I've always been compelled in my life to have purpose, to be a good role model for my kids, and to give them information that I would want if I was them. And I feel like tick tock, tick tock, the time's running out. My mother passed when she was 41 years old. I'm 42. And I feel like. I hope I live till I'm 90 and I, and I, and I think I will, I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything that I can to make sure that happens. But if by chance I'm not around, what am I leaving my kids? I'm leaving hopefully um, a legacy of your father was a good man. He worked hard for you. He treated everybody with love and respect. He made mistakes, but he, he said he was sorry when he did and he always tried to be better and I want my kids to just be good people. That's my aim. So I want to be able to give them um, answers to questions they may have um, later on in life. I always reflect, what, what would my mother say? What, what kind of advice would she have for me here? And when you're able to have these moments where they can look back and see their father having a conversation and giving advice to, to, to his peers, then they'll have that forever. You know, was there a certain time, like almost like an epiphany where you said, I got to get out and, and get it on tape or get it recorded or put it out to the masses. Cause I feel someone can learn off this. Um, was that, and if so, was that recent or over like a couple of years ago or what? Cause you know, you were always a good yeah. speaker. So you talking, yeah. you know, that wasn't the issue. No, it, it wasn't, it was an epiphany. So I was always compelled to write a book and I had started writing something that I was going to leave to my kids not to publish or anything, or maybe I would, who knows, but for something for them to have, you know, a legacy, a will, a, a, a guide, a plan, um, something a book concrete. of life. And then um, obviously, you know, society's changed and there's this, this new way of doing things. And um, quite honestly, when you were doing the challenge for your daughter, um, I don't know what it was. I saw you on a, a, it was a, it wasn't a YouTube video. It was a Facebook video of you running and talking. And I said, like, I want to do this. I don't know why. I I don't know why I feel like I should be doing it with Nick. Um, But I'm going to call him up and see what he thinks. And I think I, I I shouldn't say, I don't know why. Cause I do know why it's like, I'm like the way I am. Right. I, I like to talk. I'm outgoing. I'm this and that. And you're, you're, you're a little different. Like you said, you're more introverted. And then I saw this side of you when you were running and I'm like, I don't know. It was just something. It was like, I feel like you and I come from maybe different places. And it was like, I don't want to go at it alone. Yeah. Cause I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not like that. I'm someone that likes to be with someone else. And, and I, I, I need a partner in, in what I'm doing. I don't know. And, and you and I talked about that. It's like, I don't know why. Some people work better with others and need a partner, and some people can go at it alone. I knew I couldn't. And I don't know. It was, it was just, I, I guess, like anything in life, it's just like the right time, the right place, and it's something that pulled me. So it was, yeah. Watching you was like, you know what? He's out here doing this, like, crazy challenge. Which well, well, what, It's funny, like, our first episode, you're like, well, this is easy. I'm like, this guy's a sicko. When he, this is not easy. <laughs> like, like staying up for, for, for never mind running, like just the, the not sleeping for four hours, every four hours. I mean, this guy's nuts. And I'm thinking 
he's different than me. He's fit. He's he's dedicated. It's like I'm I'm trying to be like that, so I admire you in that way. And then you have this the, the this video that you're posting, and I'm like, there's something like calling me. It's weird, but yeah, that that was kind of it. It was like the trigger. It was like that umph I needed. It's almost like we experienced the same thing um, around the same time because I didn't, you know, when I saw the challenge put out there by David Goggins, I, I didn't put too much thought into it, but it would, all I needed was that one little thing to give me the boost. I'm like, you know what? I like to run. I've done a few races. This seems crazy. And um, all right, I'm just going to do it. You know, finally, something just, just, just you know, triggers you. It's like timing's everything, and it, the the real irony. And I know we before we went on tape with our our Justin out there, who who one day will give give you a peek of who's behind the camera. But one day soon, one day soon he'll be maybe a guest on here. But we'll definitely have him coming in because he says he's an introvert, but but he's <laughs> full of baloney. He's not an introvert. Um, and if he is, he's doing a hell of a job uh, <laughs> being like an extrovert. But um, we were talking about signs and uh, how you know you know signs come about in, in the strangest of ways and what they mean to you. And, and, and I'm always, you know, following the signs, like seeing what the, where the universe is taking me somewhat. And it's funny because our first guest, your brother-in-law and well, the, another boa, right? Big Dan. Yeah. Married to a boa. And, uh, him and I remember him and I working together as we've worked and in, in, together in, in the past we would talk about, and we didn't even touch base on this, and I know we'll have him on in the future, and I'm going to make, make sure you remind me to bring this up. Mm -hmm. I remember talking to him about, like, doing an internet thing and figuring something out with, you know, passing on information. And I think he did touch base on that, passing information to, to the next generation. Whether, you know, if you don't have kids, it doesn't mean that you can't pass your information on to, to yeah, exactly. a family member or friends or, or the, just the next generation in general. But we were trying to like explore that, like in terms of like wills and financial type stuff. And it's just funny how things, you know, work out where he's then the first guest on our podcast talking about, you know, the good life. And, uh, I, it's just, it's, 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 it's strange. And when, when I left after the first one, it was like the emotion, emotional roller coaster. I don't know if you felt it. Yeah, it was definitely, a, um, a weird feeling, right? It was Wasn't like, I don't know. This is awesome. I, I, people are going to think I sound like an idiot. It's like, but like I'm committed and I know, you know I don't want to speak for you, but like I'm committed to it and, and, and it's something I'm going to do. And, and, and every once in a while you might not feel comfortable, but you know, I'm here for a reason. I'm doing this for a reason. And, and we've both said this in the past, if it changes one person's life for the better, then it was worth it. Yeah, I think that that's important for our listeners to understand that, you know, they could listen to 59 minutes of this and, and kind of feel like, you know, they lost 59 minutes of their life. They'll never get back. But, you know, there's always that one minute, that one bit of information that can be useful to anyone and everyone. So if you're, if you're listening, you know, try to take away anything you can relate to and use it um, as a tool to essentially live a good life or live a better life than you're living now, do some good. And, um, yeah, that, 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 that's what I feel is most important or one of the most important things for what we're doing. Take yeah. away something. Yeah. And I mean, these conversations are so important too, because it's like regular guys as I know you and I are into podcasts and I'm most of the guests I'm sure that we have on will be into them. Cause it's, it's, it's like, it's the new median, right? It's the new way of, of, of getting to people and it's the new way of entertaining them and it's a new way of informing them and it's honest and there's no BS and there's no cleansing it and there's no BS. It's like yeah. at the end of the day, people are going to make their minds up about us one way or the other. But Plus we naturally want information. If you're, if you're just sitting there listening to nothing, you know, you're not really doing anything good for yourself. You have to absorb everything just to take in a little. You right. Know, you could be listening to 10 hours worth of stuff and you're really only going to absorb two to five minutes of that, let's say. So, you know, you always have to be a step ahead right. and, and take in what you can. Right. And the content's there for, you know, specific areas, you know, and th there's podcasts with people that are famous and interesting and, and, and I, and I love watching that, but there's something to be said for the, the, the interest of the normal guy like you and I, it's like, we're interesting because we're relatable. You know, people are mm -hmm. going to, people are going to be in our shoes, you know, 
we're 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 part of like I'm living the boa life. Like I'm living the good life. Why? Because I'm health. I have my health. I have a family that loves me and that I love and that I'm sacrificing for and working hard. You know, I go I go to work every day for my family, for myself. I try to improve uh, myself every day. I try to find balance in my life. I struggle right now is, is a tough time. I mean, we have to provide for our families. We have to work hard. Um, am I always doing what I want? No. I mean, I don't know what you, if like the ideal day for me would be like waking up, <laughs> exercising, going to golf, spending time day. with my kids. It's like work wouldn't be involved. That sounds in like, that. like what Mark Wahlberg does right now. You ever <laughs> see like a post he'll put up, like wake up two 30 workout, you know, 4am have breakfast, play golf by six. You know? He's living the good life. Yeah. Right. He's and, living the good life. He's worked his ass off to get there. But so, but he's got no perspective, right? The good life you gotta, yeah. you gotta put in some hard work too. To, it's like you said, with the working out, it's. I'm sure when you're waking up in the morning, you're running. That's not easy, right? Look, the biggest misconception about, you know, looking at someone do something that you think is impossible and they call it easy, like we touched on. Yeah, it, it's the biggest misconception. Like working out. Like if I were to tell you I hate running, would you believe me? Yes, it's, it's very it's <laughs> very I hard to believe, right? I, w- I would think you probably enjoy running, but I mean, if well, I hate running, so I could get that you would hate it. But I hate waking up early. That's why I do it because you got to be a step ahead. You have you, you live such a short life, and you're wasting every day. If if you're not doing anything, you're just you know the clock is ticking. You're yeah. wasting the day. So you have to do the things you hate in order to grow. I agree. Got to get a, get a, get out of that comfort zone, right? Because if it's easy, everybody's doing it, and it's not worthwhile. Exactly. Look, you know, drinking be drinking on the beach um, for vacation for a week. That's fun. That only lasts so long. Then it gets boring, you know, and, and then you get sluggish and hungover and and lazy, and then you're not being a good person. You know, it's fun once in a while, randomly. That's why it's a vacation. Yeah. But you know getting up at the butt crack of dawn and, and working out when you're tired and then going to work at, you know, a lot of people hate their job. It's like you have to do those things in order to be, um, you know, mentally prepared for what life really throws at you, which could be, you know, bad things that you can't even imagine, you know? So that's why I think doing the things you hate are the most important. No, I I agree with you. It's, you, got, you got, it's the struggle, right? You got to have the, the bitter to have the sweet. That's not to say hurt yourself or do something stupid. You're like, oh, I, I hate the cold weather. Let me run outside, you know, with just shorts on and lay in the snow. No, be smart about it. But, you know, you know, you know what's good for you. There's plenty of information out there these days. You can figure that self out, figure it out for yourself. And, uh, yeah, it's all about the challenge. You got to do things you hate. Yeah. Get out of your comfort zone. Try new things. Expand yourself. You never know what where that might take you, right? This could be anything. This could literally saying to yourself, all right, I'm going to get up and work out for an hour and do something you know, drastic like that. God forbid you never worked out before. It could be as easy as, let's say you're walking through the supermarket and um, you make eye contact with someone. You're just like, hey, how you doing? How's your day? Is that uncomfortable? Yeah, that's really uncomfortable for a lot of people, believe it or not. As easy as that is, that's super uncomfortable. But let's say you do that one time out of nowhere, and that person, you know, says hi. Back. They could be like, oh, what, you know, who are you? Get away from me. Or they could be like, hey, how's your day going? You know what? You could have made someone's day. You could have altered their life in a positive way and not even known it because possibly no one has said hi to them before. Like a stranger just randomly said, hey, how you doing? So every little thing matters. And that's about getting out outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, no, I agree. And uh, expanding yourself and getting to know different people. I, I think that's important. I, it's it's weird, too. It's like people are so so standoffish these days, too. It's, it's like you say hi, it's almost like. Well, especially now when you're, you know, everyone tells you to stay away from people. It's it's worse. But even even, you know, even before the pandemic we're going through, that was the thing. It's like, um. Why, why is that a thing? Why can't everyone just be, you know, have a, have a common sense of, of, you know, gracefulness to them and, you know, or, or be just a little outgoing. You never know. Like, why is that such a bad thing? 
I don't know. It's a good question. I think at the end of the day, that's uh, it, it's unfortunate because uh, when you can connect with people, I think it it expand and it expands your horizons and it, it it gets you into different cultures. It gets you trying different things. I mean, to me, I, I've always been a people person and I love that. And I can understand people liking to do things by themselves and all that. I think you know, different strokes for different folks. But at the end of the day, I think. The, the recurring theme here from you and I think that's important is that we have to continue um, to evolve and to grow and in order to do that you can't just do things that are easy right exactly. you yeah. have to you have to do things you don't want to do I tell my my son that all the time you have to be willing to explore things especially people especially nowadays mental health and anxiety given the pandemic and all that stuff you got to really get out of your comfort zone get out of the box try new things this like you and I, it's like, this isn't easy and it's getting easier and easier because we're doing it and we're getting more comfortable. And why? Because we weren't afraid to say, you know what? It doesn't matter. I don't care if I sound stupid. I don't care. I have a voice. I want to use my voice. I have something to say. I'm going to say it. And I'm not going to let fear get in the way of that. I'm sick of that. You know, yeah. people should be tired of that. And the same thing with, with uh, branching off and meeting people you know it's like sometimes you could have your future best friend right next to you and you're afraid to just say hi yeah. to him or her you know exactly you don't know you know if and you're not hurting something why not try it right, right. if you're not doing harm and you, you know when you do harm it's, it's it's pretty black and white right like you know when you're doing some harm so if you're doing something let's say it's neutral or good why not try it you know I, nothing bad can come of it no but you too it's like exactly it's like and, and, and again, it gets gray, right? Because there's, there's certain exp experimentation that's good and there's other stuff that's not <laughs> so good. But um, that's the complexity of life, right? But um, I don't know. I think, I think uh, you and I took the training wheels off. We're here exploring a venue that we're not familiar with, but we're jumping in two feet at a time, you know? Yeah, and just to uh, reiterate again, like, as so the listeners can take anything out of it, you know, when you called me and asked me to be on this podcast or just, just to throw your idea out there, you weren't, you, just so they know, you weren't like, oh, I want to start this podcast with you. You just kind of threw out your thoughts over a phone call and then said, sleep on it and get back to me, you know? And it, it literally took me um, maybe two seconds to decide after I hung up the phone because I used a very simple like mindset plan. It was like, all right, I have an opportunity. I can say yes or no. There really was no in between. Cause if I say yes, then I'm going to learn more about it and, and know that I would probably want to do it. So just that two second delay. And then it's like, all right. And the reason why is because I approach so many things with, is it, like I said, can it, is it going to do any harm? No, it can only be a good thing. So if you look at your decisions every day in life with, um, and it's, it's, it's hard to articulate, um, but don't let any chance, no matter how big or small go by without giving it an eye, giving it, it's giving seize it a the chance. moment, seize the day, carpe diem. Exactly. Cause let's say I was like, you know what? I don't want to get on a microphone. I don't want to, you know, spend, uh, you know, this time away from my family. I don't want to do this, this and that. And then I look back and God forbid you're famous with a podcast. I'd be, you know, <laughs> that's like, all I, I could have been there. But I think about it as yeah. that's regret, selfish as wanna, that. Yeah. No, the it, worst thing is regret because you can't make up time. Whatever need, whatever you need to motivate you. Yeah, exactly. You look, look back and like, I had an opportunity to do son like crypto, right? Justin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I had a chance to buy cryptocurrency at a dollar a pop and I didn't do it. What does that mean? That means that instead of going to the Island of Fiji, all right. I'm here with you at a podcast. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. No, you're right. I, it's like, what, what? I, I don't know how you would have said no either. It's like, it's like, I, it's, I, I it's an opportunity. And I, I needed you to say yes. Right. Because it's like, had you said no, where would I be? You think I, you're like, would I be here? I don't know that I would, you know, I, it's, I don't know. It's just, every, things happen for a reason. And um, here we are. And we're going to make the best even of it. Even like what you said, you, you, you watched a video that I was putting up when I was doing my challenge. Even those videos were hard to get up. But I said to myself, even back then, and I use this with almost everything I do. So I'm running, I have my phone with me, and I'm like, well, 
people said they want to follow me and see what I'm doing. So I have to do this. I don't want to. First of all, it's hard running with a phone. Right. Let alone talking while you're running and then showing myself, you know, on the streets of Bethel. It's like I didn't want to do it, but all it took was a second or two seconds to say, no, I have to. So I can't, you know. I have to do it. There is no no. Right. There, there was a lot of people supporting you and you wanted to let them in. That's what they wanted. You gave them I had what no they choice. I had to g- yeah. give the people what they want. Give the people but what they want. At the same time, I had a duty to, to, to let those people into my life at that moment. Like, I could not not. Well, and you know what is crazy is like, and that's what compelled me, and that's maybe why we're here today. It's amazing to me when you open up yourself, right, how you let people in. And that's in everything. And, 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 and this it was an experience. You let people into your life and it's like, look, where, look what happened. So it's like, you know, open yourself up. Don't be closed off. The universe, you're a part of everything. Everything's a part of you. And, and that's why this is extremely important. And I have no doubt that we're going to be successful, whatever that means, because we're genuinely here for um, the right reasons, right? I mean, even selfishly, selfishly, like these conversations mean a lot to me, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm articulating how I feel. I'm getting to listen to you. We have great conversations with Justin, who is informing us every day of potentially to be successful. And I can't wait to share that with the audience because there's some exhilarating conversations and and, in areas that I never even thought I would be talking about. So here we are every day, once a week having an opportunity to explore relationships with friends, family members, discuss topics that we think are important. And then one day, you know, opening it up to an audience and seeing what they want, what they want to talk about, what they want to learn, how we can learn from them. The sky's the limit, really. That's one of the, uh, I don't know if that was one of your questions. Like, what what are we looking forward to? Or what am I looking forward to? I know you are too. Like, I would love to hear from the people that are listening because. Um, you know, um, being as fit as I feel, I was also a trainer for 10 years, you know, COVID kind of messed that up a little bit over the past year, but I loved teaching people. I loved showing people that they can be better, yeah. you know, physically. And then obviously mentally will follow. But, um, well, I, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's funny that you're saying this. Cause I'm, I don't even re- I can't remember if you remember, I remember being in a class with you. Yeah, that was probably, yeah. and it's, it's, was it was it a spinning class? What it's was it? So crazy because I just really I remember can, that. I'm like, that's right. You know, when you have certain experiences and that you just remember the details forever. I remember that specific class. Um, you know, you and a couple other people in the family, and obviously, you know, my wife Kelly was there, and some other people in the gym. And I can remember putting on one of the one of the what I felt was the best performances ever. You know, it's it's. If you've ever been in a in a group exercise class or a or any any group area um, with loud music and everyone's just on this euphoric high, like I, it, it it sticks in my mind. And that that was a crazy experience. I remember yeah, I re- that I re- precisely. I can't believe I haven't brought that up in the past, but that's right. I remember being in a class and being motivated. And like I said, I I can't wait to 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 expose the layers because we're you know we're onions. We have so much to share and and uh, and explore. And it's just, uh, it's the sky's the limit, really. Yeah, um, I'm excited. Can't wait to do it some more. Yeah, it's Absolutely. you get you get stuck here because it's like you can broach a whole other topic and we can go on for hours, and that's the beauty of a podcast. Like literally, we can sit and talk forever. But some some you know sometimes good things must come to an end. I think we have an an incredible third episode. Um, it is going to be incredibly interesting to see our move from episode one just you and i to episode three and uh how much more comfortable we feel in our own skin at least i think i do and you you seem like you do too so and and where we are you know later down episodes you know 1133 yeah it's gonna be interesting to look back but uh yeah we're here we're doing it and we hope our uh our viewers and listeners are enjoying it yeah so next time um, you'll, we will, uh, we'll be back soon. The next time you see us, we'll be with our better halves. That's right. Living La Vida Boa. And, uh, be sure to tune in. Yeah. It's, it's guaranteed fun. I can tell you that much. 
Yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting. I don't know if I'm going to be doing a lot of talking. I'll probably be just sitting here, feeling everything out. And I yeah, don't know. We'll be sipping our wine because you know we have to be. It's going to be flowing. I, we didn't even reflect on the bringing out the 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 party. Yeah. <laughs> well, the party juice. <laughs> Today it's like water. It was good, I, you know. I'm not even gonna tell you what's in here. It's like I think it's tea. It's not even coffee, but uh, we love you, audience. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, do whatever people do on the internet these days, because we appreciate you and we hope you appreciate us. Thanks, everyone. See you soon. <laughs>